In the 1960s, computers were gigantic mainframe machines, requiring their special rooms with powerful air conditioning to keep them cool. The mainframes received their instructions from punch cards by computer operators, and any instructions given to the mainframe required writing a new piece of software, which was the realm of mathematicians and computer scientists. To make programming accessible to a wider range of people, Dartmouth College mathematicians and computer scientists Thomas E. Kurtz and John G. Kemeny invented BASIC, Beginner's All-Purpose Symbolic Instruction Code, a general-purpose, high-level programming language designed for ease of use. In the mid-1970s and 1980s, versions of BASIC became widespread on microcomputers that usually shipped with a form of BASIC. Having an easy-to-learn language on these early personal computers allowed small business owners, professionals, hobbyists, and consultants to develop custom software on computers they could afford. Much later, Sony packaged a version of BASIC for their PlayStation 2 on the demo disc shipped with the PS2 in PAL territories, so it could be considered a home computer, not just a games machine, thus bypassing European import taxes. This version of BASIC for the PlayStation 2 was Ya Basic, so it was great to see that Ya Basic is included in the FreeBSD ports tree. In this video, we'll have a quick run with Ya Basic and have a look to see if we can use it in 2022. If you thought that BASIC was a thing of the past, you may need to think again. Yeah, BASIC is a traditional BASIC interpreter. It comes with go-to and various loops and allows to define subroutines and libraries. It does simple graphics and printing and it can call out to libraries written in C and allows the creation of standalone programs. Yeah, BASIC runs under FreeBSD and has a comprehensive documentation. It's small, simple, open source and free. The main Yeah, BASIC website will give you all the documentation, latest news, regarding this dialect of BASIC and even some examples. There's plenty of mm, there's plenty of help available on the internet. Just make sure that any examples you find for Yap BASIC are not for the PS2 version, which won't work on the PC version. To install Yap BASIC, you just need to PKG install Yap BASIC. That's using pre-compiled packages. And if you want to actually compile yourself from ports, Change directory to user, ports, lang, yabasic, and then make install clean. Right, there's two ways that we can get a program up and going in yabasic. We can, if we so desired, use the interpreter itself in a live fashion. So in one of the terminals I have open, if you just type in yabasic, and it should come alive right there, there you go. And anything that you type in will be executed immediately and cannot be saved. So this is good for testing things out, but if you really want to save something, then you should go over to, say, a text editor. In this case, we're just going to edit, which invokes EE, and call a file test.yab. And so we know it's a, a yeah, basic file. You could, of course, call it <laughs> dot .hello or anything you want, really. But yab makes common sense. And in this directory here, you can see I've got some previously saved examples. So if we go over to the live session, and if we type in open window, 640 by 512, it will create a rectangle window to display graphics, 640 by 512 pixels. Then if we type in fill rectangle 100, 100 to 200, 200, it will create a coloured in or shaded in rectangular block and then coordinates at 100 across. And there we go. So it's quite simple. Remember, anything that you want to actually keep and save, you create a text file with the same instructions. So if we copy over these two live things there and we save it, And there it is in that directory. So if we go over to that terminal and type in yabasic and then the name of the file that we just created and saved, as in test.yab. And there's the file that we just created and execute. 
So it's pretty cool. So if we go back to that file and edit again, and I changed something slightly off camera. It's now 300, 300 to 400, 400, so it's still 100 Why I just shifted it uh, on the screen a little bit. If you type in circle, 100, 100, 50. So it's at the uh, X and Y coordinates at 50 in diameter. And we will run it again. There we go. Very simple graphics. Uh, but an example of what you could do if you were more skilled than I am, of course. So if we go to the live session again. And if we print hello, it will do the most simplest uh, hello back to us. You can use line numbering in Yabasic if you wish. Uh, that's something which I used when I was much younger. Although... It's a modern language, so you don't need uh, line numbers. But either there if, you, uh, if it helps you keep tab of what you've been doing. So if you create a very simple program of 10 print hello world semicolon, and then 20 go to 10, of course it will loop back and fill the screen with hello worlds. But there's a different way that we can achieve this. Um, because it's a structured basic, we can define a loop name or label name, label test, we can put the instruction that we want to do is hello world, of course. And then we could go to test. So it's almost like BBC Basic, where I think you could define prox. So yeah, it's a different way to achieve the same thing as using 10, 20, go to 10. So if we have a look at some of the other programs that I have in the folder, as a demo really. If you just type in yeah, basic and spiral, one of them is spiral. Ask for the number of sides and there's the, there you'll just put four. And it gives a very simple, almost like a spirograph pattern. And if we have a look at spiral, Those familiar with basic could, so it consists of rems and defining variables, etc. So if you've used basic in the past, this will, it will look very familiar. And there's where the, uh, the actual calculations take part. It's very nice indeed. So, another one that we can look at would be uh, Mandel, for the good old fashioned Mandelbrot. Yep, there we go. It's nothing fancy, but it's uh, a function in Mandelbrot image. And not too, uh, not too slow, actually. Pretty good. So we'll have a look at the one called Sinus. And it's not looking at noses. It's looking at a sine graph. Again, you could change the variables and achieve uh, your own little calculations, if you wish. Next, we're going to have a look at the high law. So here we are, it's a simple high lower card game. And what it's doing now is uh, drawing the card and then it will copy that down there. There you go. Speed wise, it's not too bad. So next, it's asking for a high or low. It's uh, going to be low. So let's um, we'll click on low. Of course. Next one would be oh, that's, that's, uh, okay. This one could be low again. My look is never this good. And oh, I don't know. Hi, maybe. I'll quit before I start losing. Next, we'll have a look at Tetris. Of course. Every version of Basic has got to have a Tetris game. And this is a very playable version, actually. I mean, you can't go wrong with Tetris, but this is quite good. Next, we've got Fruit Machine for the uh, cheapest way to do a bit of gambling. And finally, a little bit of animation using a, like a little sprite, I suppose. A space invader with one alien and a very slow moving missile. Very nice and smooth animation, actually. 
they have to calculate what it's going to be, and then, yeah, of course. So yeah, this was only a short demo of what your basic can do, and that is current and up to date, and actually uh, still being developed. It's a funny thing, I've not programmed in BASIC for a long, long time, so I'm going to have to rediscover things that I did. Of course, each dialect of BASIC is different, so I'm going to have to convert some of the old listings that I've got. But yeah, it's very good. So you're probably asking, why should I use BASIC? Well, so you're probably asking, why should I use BASIC? Well, for those of us who can't program, I've tried looking at C++ and I just I can't understand it. Python, I probably could try giving it a go. But to be honest, I'm not a programmer. It takes a certain mindset, I think. Uh, BASIC is really all I really uh, got past in the 80s. And of course, you lose track of it and home computers change and BASIC really wasn't a feature anymore. But now that we have access to it, and because your BASIC is fairly extensible, you can call it as an independent program and also link it to some GTK libraries. You could have a BASIC program which fits in with all the other applications on your desktop, which is crazy when you think about it. It's possible. But anyway, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you next time. This and every other video on my channel has been made using FreeBSD and open source software.